G'day, my name is Brian from Bijan Tech. We're going to look at this Lenovo ThinkPad P14S Gen 2. Now this one I've got here is the Intel version. There is an AMD Ryzen version available for the P14S Gen 2. And this one here is special. It's got configured with the Privacy Guard display, which we'll have a little bit more exploring of this display a little later in the video. As well as that, I'm going to look at the temperature and fan of this computer. And as for the features of this computer, it is very, very similar to the P14S Gen 1. So for the keyboard, mouse and speakers, please just refer to my previous video on the Gen 1, which I'll link up here. I will be putting timestamps along this video so you can skip to the different sections that you may be interested to save you time. So what is the difference between Gen 2 versus Gen 1? What have they improved? Now, first off, of course, is the processor. The processor has been upgraded from 10th generation Intel Core to the 11th generation Intel Core. Now, the second part is part of the discrete graphics, which is, again, is an optional thing. But before, what was available was the NVIDIA Quadro P520. And now what's available in the Gen 2 is the NVIDIA T500. So that's just going to moving it up to the modern generation. And the other thing that's been upgraded is the Thunderbolt ports. It's now Thunderbolt 4 instead of Thunderbolt 3. And the other thing that's been upgraded is the full HDMI port, which is moved from version 1.4b to version 2. But it contains the exact same amount of ports that it has in the Gen 1. As for the temperatures and fan noise, when I took my measurements, my ambient temperature was 21 degrees Celsius and my ambient room noise was 36 decibels. Now, before I give you the numbers, as always, your average hand is anywhere between 33 to 34 degrees Celsius. So you can have an idea of how hot or how cool uh, this laptop could be. So I took my base measurement when the computer was on idle and the hottest air on the keyboard measured in at 30 degrees Celsius. As for the fan noise, it was at 36 decibels. So that's practically quiet. And the internal core temperature average was 38 degrees Celsius. Then I put 20% load on the computer, which is like average use. So that's tasks like office productivity work, streaming videos, surfing the web, and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at a peak of 36 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 38 decibels and the average internal core temperature was 64 degrees Celsius. Then I put the computer on 50% load and the hottest air on the keyboard measured in at 40 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 39 decibels and the average internal core temperature was 32 degrees Celsius. Then I put the computer on 100% load and the hottest air on the keyboard measured in at 41 degrees Celsius. And as for the Maximum fan noise hit a maximum of 41 decibels. And as for the average internal core temperature was 82 degrees Celsius. I also measured the bottom back cover and the hottest area measured in at 55 degrees Celsius. And of course the fan noise stayed at 41 decibels. Comparing the results to the Gen 1, the Gen 2 has dramatically improved temperatures compared to Gen 1. Performing the benchmarks on this P14S Gen 2, this one's configured with an i7 1185G7 with 32 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, and also the NVIDIA T500. And here is the scores for Passmark, CDBench R23, PC Mark, 3D Mark, Geekbench 5, Crystal Disk Mark, Pugin Photoshop, Pugin Lightroom, Pugin Premiere Pro, Pugin After Effects, Procon Office, Procon Photo Editing, Procom Video Editing, Blender, Furmark, Compute Bench, Octane Bench, Luxmark, Eugene Engine, and Spec View Pref. Here's some gaming benchmarks like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Far Cry New Dawn, Far Cry 6. Immortal Phoenix Rising, and F1 2021. Testing out the color gamut coverage of the Privacy Guard 500 nit multi-touch display resulted with 92.6% sRGB coverage, 65.2% Adobe RGB coverage, and 67.4% 
DCI P3 coverage. Ideally, this privacy display is more suited for office productivity work rather than photo or video editing that's working with colors. I'm going to do a demonstration of the privacy guard. At the moment, I don't have it turned on, but if I turn it on, you'll see it dim down a little bit for the backlight. Now I'm just going to turn it off just so you can see what it looks like. Now I've got some text and pictures here just so, so you can see what it looks like. Now I'm going to actually just move across about 45 degrees and that's kind of what it looks like without the privacy guard and now around about probably about 60 degrees. Now I'm going to actually turn on privacy guard by pressing function D and you'll see what the difference is. And I'm going to go to about 45 degrees and now we're directly head on. I'm just going to turn it off again just so you can see it again and I'm going to turn it back on again and we're going to slowly rotate to see what it looks like with the privacy guard on. So about 60 degrees. Now I'm going to turn on the privacy guard off at 45 degrees. Privacy guard's off. Privacy guard's back on and off again. And that's kind of what it looks like. Just a quick demonstration of what it looks like for the privacy guard. If you have the privacy guard display configured, there is an additional software which enhances the privacy guard and it is a software called Glance which you'll find in all apps. Now, it sits in the system tray as like a little circle and has a couple of colors that it goes through which tells you if you're looking at the display or not. Now I'm going to go through a quick through the software itself. So present detection is if you walk away from the computer or if you're at the computer, then it can do certain functions. For example, it can either lock the screen or it can dim the display or if it can turn the screensaver if you're not at your computer. And then there's a few other parameters down here. Now snap window is something I'll demonstrate a little bit later on, which you, it actually goes and moves the whole window to the display that you are looking at. Now this does require to have additional displays connected or additional external monitors connected for this to be enabled. Now smart pointer is basically moving the cursor to the display that you are looking at. Now, again I'll demonstrate this a little bit later on. Now smart display is if you're looking at a particular display it will then blur the display or you can then have that set at a for delay. Again I'll demonstrate this a little bit later on. And then privacy card is something that we've done before and privacy Privacy alert, which means if someone is looking over your shoulder, you can actually set up certain functions just to tell you what would happen or not. And then we've got the digital wellness setting. This is something like a coffee timer just to give you a message on the screen to say your work zone, maybe to go for a stand up or do something in that particular time. Now with the video conferencing, it does work out something that's pretty cool is it will work out if you move towards the webcam it will unmute you and then if you move away from the webcam or sit back, it will then mute you automatically. I'm just going to do a demonstration of the Glance software uh, about how it actually protects the display by blurring the display. Of course, you can probably dim it as well too in the settings. Now I'm going to turn on the software on and you do need the privacy because it runs off the IR as well too. So you will down the bottom, I've just got it down here and it's just gone green which means it's actually turned on. Now I've got it on extended mode with an external display as well. So I'm now currently looking at the built-in display and I'm going to look into the extended display. You'll see it unblows the extended display and it should blur the built-in display which I'm not looking at. Now I'm just going to look at the built-in display and hopefully it should blur out the extended display. Now besides doing that there is one called smart cursor down at the bottom here so smart pointer sorry and it is when I look at the display you also jump the cursor at the exact same time of this display that I am looking at. So now I'm just going to look at the display and now again I've now jumped the cursor there without me having to do the scroll that I usually do. Now the other thing you can do is smart windows so it's snap in so I just got to click on and hold onto the title of the window and then if I look the other side it will jump the whole entire display without me having to move my cursor around uh, there so that's really cool to do now of course there's presence detection as well so I'm just going to look away and that should then hopefully blur both displays as well and I'll just look at the display the other thing it's got is a uh, privacy alert so if it detects people looking over your shoulder so I'm just going to get someone to come now and look over my shoulder now 
and you'll see the icon saying there's someone looking at my shoulder now and I'll just get them to move away and again they're no longer looking at the shoulder now. So I'll just do that one more time if I get the person to look over my shoulder now hopefully we get the display for me and someone's behind me looking at my screen and I'll be gone away which is kind of nice to see to have that privacy alert and I'll get them to move away. So hopefully that's just a quick demonstration of the Glance software. It does require the hardware to make it run and also the privacy guide working is pretty sweet. It is a little buggy. I have found it sometimes not work when I've walked away and come back and do it again. Uh, it's just a matter of rebooting the software, but once you're actually looking at the display and work on the computer, that software is doing pretty well. But I think it maybe we might look at maybe some software updates to improve it more stable. Overall, it's nice to see the performance increase as well as the better temperatures from the new processor. But else, it's just a little minor upgrades with the new versions of the ports of the Thunderbolt 4 port and the HMI port. Now I hope you find this video informative or enjoyed it. If you did, smash that like button for me. It does help me out. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to the channel by hitting that subscribe button on the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And as always, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll catch you in the next video.